Hi, Jeff here, and it's early morning in the Dead Sea Valley on the Green in the Desert project. I'm gonna take you for a walk around to show you some of the unusual features of the project and why it's worked. Let's go for a walk. What we've done over the years, more than anything else, is we've built mass. And a lot of the mass is not necessarily productive in that it's got much to sell, it's actually mass that feeds the soil. And there's a lot of diversity. Uh, Lukina here has played a major part, but there's a great diversity of mass because that's what you want. You want to feed the soil with many different components. So casuarinas are a large part here. And, and there's a great big diversity. Here's cotton, literally cotton. It's got cotton wool on it, look. And it's, it has some value, but it has mass. Now here's a moringa, deciduous at this time of year. And that has value, but it also has mass. But then there's pomegranate, which mainly has fruit, not so much mass. And of course there's ground covers, because you've got to start the mass layer at the ground and come up layer by layer. But initially there was nothing here. There was just rock and terrible soil. And then we had to partner with a lot of diversity. Here's one of my global favorite weedy trees, Tacoma Stands. It goes through a chipper beautifully if you want to chip it. And it's very, very fast, not a legume, but it sure produces mass. And here we have partnered next to our fast functioning Lucina. You can see how it's regularly been cut, produces all that mass in 12 months and gets cut every year but very similar looking, but slower to function, larger in size, more elegant, and much larger in time, longer in time. This is Albizia Lebec. Now that'll be there in the long term. It won't be, it, it's not a, a fast system, it's a long term. So as you go through, there's a lot of mass building lots and lots of decomposition network communities in the soil which are giving us that sustainable system. If you just give it a fast hit with nitro and fertilizer, you'll get a lot of life in the soil, but it'd be like a monoculture life. It'll all be prolific and it'll all die at once. It, it, it's not the kind of life you want anything to live. And your fruit trees and your production is continuously needing support, but this is a long-term community of mass. And Oh, I'm underneath Jerusalem Thorn, a local. Um, it's a great legume tree. And uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's part of the system. There's not just locals, they're just not natives only. There's a mixture of hardworking immigrant species. There's a lot of olives, but see the earlier photos, see what we had to start with. It was always a mass struggle to build mass. Mass was the struggle. Once you have the mass, you have the integrated community and you're feeding the soil with all those different root systems. And it gets easier and easier and easier because you're building stability in the diversity. Let's go up the top and look down. On my way up to the top of this building, I can show you we've interrupted this continuously with more and more buildings for accommodation, more and more infrastructure to help people understand what we're doing. And, and that has been a whole set of changes to the site. We couldn't do all this at once. We funded this course by course, student education by student education. Dates will be a larger part of the mass in the end and very productive. They're already coming in really strong. So I just had to interrupt our walk up to the top of this building to look down to explain this. It's not been a straightforward build it and, and, and move forward. It's been stage by stage as we could afford to put in the infrastructure. We had nothing, we only had the land, and then we built from there. As I climb the staircase to the top of this two-story building, we'll be three stories up in the air on one of the highest points on the property. And that's what the land looked like 
it was as barren as that hill there. And then when we come around, we can look right over the landscape as the irrigated Jordan Valley. In the distance, you might just be able to see Jericho and the West Bank there. But when you look down on our site, that's the mass. That's the mass I'm talking about. You can see next door, the landscapes are pretty barren, apart from a little strip of green there. That's Abler's garden, one of our students and uh, a great permaculture activist. But when you come through here, there's nothing but canopy mass. There's things you can work with. And you come right around the corner. Obviously the top of the site here is pretty barren compared to the bottom because it has, that's the top catchment. And then the nutrient gathers as it goes downhill. There's my old shepherd mate there, Abu Riyad, on his way up the hill with his few sheep and goats. But there is the working material. There is the mass. We can manipulate the mass to feed the productive system. That's what's really crucial to understand. So, up on the roof, looking down on the Jordan Valley, with the canopy below me, this is what I'm trying to get you to understand. There's a big difference between building an ecosystem community that feeds your productive trees. There's a big difference between that and trying to falsely fertilize just to get production with one quick hit. Make as, you know, produce as much as you can, as quick as you can and get out with the money. This is building permanence, a community that you can always work with that build strength over time and gets more and more stable. It's important to understand that this diversity gives you that working relationship. And it takes a little while to learn it. I mean, we started with rock and, and, and terrible soil and slowly, slowly. We could do it quicker if we'd have been funded, but we've had to fund ourselves. We've funded ourselves into this existence through our success. People come to us because they like what we're doing. Um, so I like to be able to help you understand and we can teach you through these systems. This is where you can get the experience. Now, it changes from climate to climate. This is definitely dry arid. Australia, Zaytuna farm, subtropics. We can teach you there. We have a lot of systems up. And now in Central Europe, which is cold in winter and hot in summer, continental climate, we can teach you on a wonderful project there. So we're trying to give you that global confidence, the experience you get from working with different situations. Okay, great bringing it to you.